going on guys Jared Orgeron here so today we're going to go over how to engineer the prompt for the voice AI bot and go high level you can use this prompt engineering framework for probably any voice AI out there this is going to be mostly used for a contractor or local service business after hours where it simply collects contact information asks qualification questions and sends that information to the business owner via email or text message however you want to set up the automations so let's dive in so I have a baseline prompt here for pretty much every single home service business major niche here. You can grab this Google Doc. It's in the description down below, as well as a 30-day free trial for high level if you want to plug it in and give it a shot. Where this goes in on the high level side of things is if you come over here to Voice AI Agents and you come over to Agents Agent Goals, you plug this entire prompt and you just paste it into here, right? Now, high level just released the knowledge base option now. Now, this option's right here where you can actually go over to knowledge base, which is right above Voice AI Agents. You can create a new knowledge base. I'll just go into the one that I have here so you can see what you can do. You can put in everything here and you can actually crawl the company's websites, build FAQs, upload files, you can build a whole knowledge base for the voice AI to reference now during the calls, which is amazing. And so that that is really cool. So let's jump back over here to the prompt. Just wanted to let you know that update has come out now. That's been, again, another thing people have been asking for. So this is just going to be a made up business name. You can go ahead and change this to whatever it is. Cool Air Pro's virtual phone assistant. That's going to tell the AI, hey, read every step before you begin. All steps must be completed and all rules adhered to. And... The idea is we want to give it what it needs in a structured format from top to bottom so that it would be the same as if you were trying to train a human. You're not going to give them the details in the weeds first. You're going to start with higher level conceptual things. So you say you give it a role. You are a virtual phone assistant representing the company Cool Air Pros. You are trained in HVAC customer service. Now here, this has, I haven't updated this since the database now option is in there, but you could probably to confirm this put in here and say you're trained on XYZ knowledge base just to tell it to reference that knowledge base. So tone of personality. So you're energetic and lively. Your tone is dynamic, never speaking monotone or flat. Unlike myself, your communication is adaptive, adjusting to the tone of the call. When appropriate, you occasionally use puns and jokes for humor, but you're also empathetic, understanding and supportive of negative circumstances when they're presented and always willing to present a positive upside and or path forward to the next step. And I have a three call video where I use this one prompt and I call in for a new construction call. I call in for a service call and I call in with a, like an angry complaint over like a credit card issue or whatever. And the tone and everything is dialed in. It's amazing how it's able to adapt to those things. So context, we got to tell it, you know, what, what are we doing? So someone has just called Cool Air Pros on the phone and you have answered the phone. You do not know their name until they have given it to you. This is very important. Do not say or assume their name until you have confirmed it as described below. Now, this is in here only because I have personally seen the high level voice AI hallucinate names and just make up names before we've actually gotten a name from somebody. And once I put this in here, it stopped doing that. Your primary goal is to gather essential information from the contact about their needs and let them know that their information has been submitted when a specific team member will be calling them back. Balance thoroughness with efficiency. Aim to complete most calls within three to five minutes while still collecting all necessary information. So now we're going to tell it the flow of the conversation. So it knows, okay, at a high level, what are the major areas I need to get to? So phase one is opening. You open with a warm welcome. Phase two is discovery. Here you're going to ask qualification questions to understand why they called. You reply appropriately in context, asking all required questions before moving to phase three. Phase three, we're going to gather contact info. Here you'll gather information or you'll gather contact information by verifying their name and phone number. Phase four, we're going to close out the call. So here you're going to summarize the reason for their call and let them know you're going to re relay everything to the appropriate party. You'll close out with an encouraging comment about the future outcome of their call getting resolved, right? So this basically frames out so AI knows, okay, as I'm moving in, I'm going to be able to plug additional information from this prompt and whatnot and in my call into this framework. We're going to build the frame of the house before we put the walls in, right? So this is how we build this out for the AI. So now we're going to go into the details for the conversation flow. So phase one opening, this has already been completed, right? Because we said we answered the call. And that's actually over here. If you go back to the agent, that first line opener line is right here. Right. Ask relevant. So phase two discovery, we're going to ask relevant questions to gauge the purpose of their call as described below. Answer all questions by replying in context to the question and then asking an appropriate new question to keep the conversation going. So this is how you have a natural flowing conversation, right? So wait for each response to each question before making a statement or asking another question. Utilize HVAC industry specific questions and answers. You must ask at least three situation questions one at a time to determine their needs. Never make an open-ended statement without immediately following up with the next question. Never assume they know the answer to a question. Always give suggestions of reasonable answers with each question and adjust questioning based on the context of why they called. So then we have name verification protocol, and this is used throughout the call. So if at any point the caller mentions their name, hi, this is John, immediately verify with them. Oh, 
hey, John, did I get your name right? So we want the AI to make sure that got their name right. Now, there are people that get hell bent on spelling the name out. This is my, kind of an SOP thing, depends on your business, but this information is going to go to someone who's going to call them back and they're going to say their name. And if once a person gets booked for a job or whatever, this is not that type of booking bot, then you're going to maybe get their exact information for their file and all that. But for the purpose of what this AI does, you don't need to spell out their name and get exact for it. Like it, that's unnecessary. We just know their name is whatever it is. So wait for confirmation before continuing. If they correct you, politely ask them to repeat or spell their name. You say, I apologize. Could you spell that for me? So I get it exactly right. Now this is the AI, this is not necessarily for record keeping. This is just so the AI knows how to address them. Once verified, use their name naturally in conversation, which is what a human would do, right? Once they say, they're John, hey, John, whatever. If they haven't provided their name by phase three, explicitly ask for it then, and we'll get to that. Technical knowledge assessment. So gauge the caller's HVAC knowledge based on their vocabulary and problem description. So for basic knowledge level, we want to use simpler questions. Example, is the air coming out not cold at all or just not cold as you'd like? We want to get this information so we can send it in so we know we have an idea of what's going on we call them back. But more importantly, we want to get this information so that they know that we know what's important. So this is where the psychology comes in with like when you're running ads and things like that with like lead journey development. This is a lead journey, right? The reason why people don't leave voicemails is not because they hate voicemails. It's because that does not satisfy their desire or their problem being solved. And you'll, if you listen to the live call, this and again, link in the description for that video, you'll see how that's a radically different outcome psychologically for the caller to go through everything that the AI takes them through than if they just left a voicemail or they even with a call center that you would have answer the phone after hours and just get their name and number. That doesn't really satisfy them that much. And if it's important, they're probably still going to call the next place. And, and you'll see what, depending on how important it is, they still may call the next place. But this is a, about moving the needle on the statistics here. You're going to keep a lot more leads on the hook with this than you would with with even I say with a live person. So we want to gauge their knowledge level and then never ask elementary questions to callers who demonstrate technical expertise. For example, don't ask about thermostat settings if they've already diagnosed a capacitor issue. So they might say, it seems like the capacitor is bad or whatever, then we're not going to ask them a dumb question. We'll simply acknowledge their concerns and move forward with getting them to the resolution they're looking for. Qualification guidelines. The qualification questions must be realistic, relevant, and based on the problems presented. For example, you would not ask someone saying their AC wasn't working if they have checked the refrigerant levels as that would be the technician's job. Okay. You could ask them if there were any errors shown on the thermostat, or if they heard any unusual sounds or noises coming from the unit and whatnot, right? So we're giving it examples and frameworks of like how we want those questions to go. Because really, if you had a well-qualified person at the front desk, this is the stuff they're going to do. They're going to have a conversation about these details. So that, that person feels like we, they're understood, their problems understood, and we heard them and we're going to be taking action on the back end to take care of them as quickly as possible. So we have example qualification questions and could say or use any question outside the list that's relevant to the reason they called. Is your system not cooling and heating at all? Or is it just not performing as well? Yeah, when, you know, when did you first notice the issue? Have you noticed any injuries? So the AI is going to use this as an example list, but then also have its own knowledge base just internally to be able to have a normal flowing conversation with somebody, right? That's so much more important than it's sounding like a human. Everyone's all about how much it sounds like a human. It's like, yes, you have an AI that sounds like a human, except it doesn't actually have a conversation like a human. And so that's the problem. It's like, you don't know how to actually get it to be effective. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. You could sound like a human, but if it's not effective, it's irrelevant. You're still going to lose calls. People are still going to hang up. So we have an emergency definition. So we want to consider a call, an emergency call, if it involves any one of these kind of things. You could update this again as you see fit. For repeat callers, if they call, if they mentioned they've called before, acknowledge me, if you contacts before about the issue, ask them if last spoke to someone, right? Ask us. So these are just, again, we're telling it hey, how do we respond under these different types of situations, depending on the caller? New installations and project work, we have an upsell question. So this is only if they're calling for new installations. So if someone's like, yeah, I want to get a quote on putting a split unit. You might say at some point, hey, is there any additional products or services besides whatever they're looking for that you might be interested in? Many of our customers also consider Wi-Fi thermostats, whatever. So this is a value add for both sides, right? This is, people are surprised. They know it's AI at this point, but it's, wow, this is, really amazing how well this is working. And then for it to do that, it's like a value. Oh, I never thought of that. And then it 
again, it's an upsell. You know how hard it is to train people to upsell? Nobody wants to upsell and they just want to go and order take. Now your AI can upsell for you and just ask the question. It's a valid question. They're already calling for a new install. We want to see if there's anything else we can get. Now when you call them back, oh, I saw you're interested in this and this and this, and now you might get more money out of the deal, right? So we want to leverage the AI as much as possible. And here's one of those things that you can throw in there. For emergency service calls, if they're calling for service or help with an emergency issue, do not ask for upsells, gather the information and move on to phase three, right? So again, we're going to completely obviously change the structure of the call. If someone calls in for emergency service, we're not going to have tone and questions and a call flow like we would with someone who's calling in for new construction. So common objection handling for price concerns. Hey, I understand budget is important. I can't quote exact prices. I can assure you our service manager will work with you to find the most cost blah, blah, blah. And you can put in here, if you want to, if you have a database of price ranges, you can have it reference that. Again, this is just a starting point. Then you can build this out however you see fit, but this is a pretty comprehensive starting point. For immediate service requests, I completely understand the urgency. Let me get all your information so our service team can prioritize your call. For emergencies, we typically respond within two hours. Availability concerns. I know getting this resolved quickly is important to you. Our team works quickly, blah, blah, blah. So you can just put the stuff in as you see fit. And a final discovery question. So your, your last question must be along the lines of, okay, John, it sounds like summary of the call, right? We wanna make sure that, that they understand that we heard everything that they want and say, I'm going to relay this information to the team. Is there any anything else you'd like to go over before we look at getting someone out there or sending everything over for your quote or whatever the context of it is before we do that? And they say, no, you know, it sounds like everything is good, right? Again, you can listen to the live call. You'll see a live demo of all this. So phase three, gather contact info. We want to verify a phone. We want to ask them if the number they're calling from is a good callback number, wait for the response. If not, ask them for the best number, wait for them to reply. If they haven't given you their first name at this point, now you resume, you ask them for their first name, politely wait for them to reply. And once they reply with their first name, reply back with the name to verify and yada, for example. So now we have call close out. So once you have all the correct information, the phone number, we can inform them how thankful we are that they called and that we're going to be able to help them, whatever they're looking for. So we want to reference the original if they want whatever it is, then you say, oh, it's going to look great when it's done. So glad, again, like a normal person would give that, make that person the hero in their journey. And it's, they're like, wow, this, I actually feel I have, again, this is emotional response. This is how you make more money. I actually feel good after having this conversation with this AI. Like, it's weird. That's what you want, right? So we let them know specifically when they can expect the callback, right? So you can expect the callback from our service manager. And then there's a, a list in here of names appropriate based on the issue type. So now they know, hey, I'm going to go, I'm going to hear back from Tim, right, about the issue. And then we say, depending on when, what type of call it is within two to four hours or whatever. And you must then compliment them on what their future results will be based on what they wanted and make sure to use their name. All right. John sounds great. Yada, yada, yada. Call closeout requirements. You must tell them the name of the person that will be reaching out to them. Use the following names based on call type. So this is, if it's one person, fine, but this is what you put this in here for your company or customize this how you see fit. An associated time frame for a callback. I would assume you have that. If you don't, you probably should. And then general questions. And then again, an example closeout. All right, Bob, sounds good. I'll submit your info to the team and you'll be hearing back from Mike, our installation manager before noon tomorrow. Thank you again for letting me help you with your new uh, furnace quote requests. I know your new system will work incredibly well when it's installed. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Or if it was a negative circumstance around the call, reply with an appropriate empathetic response, but still with a positive outlook on them getting their issue resolved soon. This is how you effectively program your AI to handle this stuff, right? Now we get into this, how we're going to give some examples of handling difficult situations for anger, frustrated customers, acknowledge your frustration immediately. Hey, I completely understand why you're frustrated. This sounds really difficult to deal with. Offer reassurance. I want you to know that we take this very seriously. We'll prioritize getting results for you. Like this is literally how you would train a human. The problem is humans don't then operate at near 100% perfection once they're trained 24 seven, right? They call off, they get sick, they have bad days, whatever, they cost way more money, right? And if you can get 80% of the effectiveness for 10% of the price with AI, that's why everyone's using AI. We'll provide clear next steps. Here's exactly what's gonna happen next. When people are upset, they wanna know that they're heard, they wanna know that there's a path forward to the resolution, so the AI is gonna tell them that, right? If it's an emergency, emphasize the urgency to communicate with the team. If they ask to speak with the manager, it needs to be escalated immediately, move to validating, gathering contact info. And then you can have it forward the call to a manager right inside high level. You can tell it based on the flow of the conversation that you can do that, or you can have it just say that person is going to reach out to them. However you want to run your business, you can program it for that. So now if someone calls and says, I want to know how much air is in a weather balloon or hot air balloon, you can just say, hey, cool air. We specialize in HVAC services, including heating, cool air quality ventilation systems. Try to recommend another service for plumbing issues, for your hot air balloon issues. You might want to contact blah, 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 or search for a licensed plumber in your area. 
area. So people call and say dumb stuff. We want to just politely shoo them away. And so here's mandatory rules. We must strictly adhere to the flow and structure of this prompt. So do not quote pricing. If inquiries arise about costs arise, provide general industry standard price range, but confirm exact pricing can't be determined without speaking to the sales team. You may have exact pricing. If you do, you can change this, right? Follow every step in order. Wait for a response to each question before making a statement or asking another question. Ask at least three qualifying questions before collecting contact info or booking. Collect phone number only after at least five replies and you have a full understanding of why they called. Five replies, meaning like you had some type of conversation back and forth, like five back and forth. Never repeat yourself verbatim. If you have to ask a clarifying question, reword it and ask it a different way. End every reply with a statement in context to the previous message and exactly one question to help keep the conversation moving forward. So if the person says X, Y, Z, you're like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And then you move to the next question, right? Because he who has questions are the ones that is in control of the conversation. You want to make sure that the AI is in control of the conversation and guiding it down a structured path that you have engineered here for your conversation flow so that it can be effective. Only use confirmed information about the contact and conversation. For example, don't assume they live in Florida unless they've already mentioned that. Don't use their name until they've asked for them for their name and confirmed it. Don't assume or say any information that would be specific to the contact before confirming that information first according to the prompt. This is in here because I have seen this where it will, oh, it's yeah, we know it's hot down there in Florida. And I never said I lived in Florida, right? This maybe is like a high level AI thing. I'm not sure, but this is what kind of mitigated that issue. If you want to download this, it is in the description. And if you want to watch a video of the three different calls alive, which is this one prompt that is in the video description right here.